Hey everybody, welcome to the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, I'll be hanging out with you today. It's been a while since we put out a video, but here you go. Today we jump into a new unit on energy. There's gonna be eight or 10 videos in this series, so stick with us. Hopefully by the end, you'll have a pretty good idea of how the body keeps going. So as is the case with every video that we do, I'm gonna give you your objectives so you know what you need to know by the end of the video. So here they go. They are as follows. First one, compare and contrast catabolic and anabolic pathways. Lots of vocabulary in the video today, so try to keep track of it. Describe each of the forms of energy. There are four of them. We'll talk briefly about each one. And explain the first and second laws of thermodynamics. Those are your big money ones that if you get nothing else, these are the ones you need to get added today. So we're going to start our discussion today with metabolism. Now, when you hear metabolism, I am sure that you just think about your body breaking down food. And maybe if you've got a fast metabolism, you're skinny. If you have a slower metabolism, maybe you have a hard time keeping weight off. I know when I was a kid back in the day, I had a hard time keeping the weight off. So I know about the slow metabolism. But anyway, I digress. Metabolism is just all of the chemical reactions that go on in your body, not just breaking down food, but everything from muscles moving to you shivering to your bones growing to cells sending messages back and forth. All of those chemical reactions are part of your metabolism. So we're not just talking about food breakdown when we talk about metabolism. If somebody's got quick metabolism, it just means that in general, all those chemical reactions are happening at a higher speed. Now, this brings me to the concept of a metabolic pathway. I'm just going to draw you a quick and ugly diagram. A metabolic pathway is just a series of chemical reactions. So it would be like triangle is worked on by an enzyme, which changes it into a circle, which is worked on by another enzyme, which changes it to a square, which is worked on by another enzyme. And finally, we get to a rectangle. That right there is a metabolic pa pathway. In this pathway, you have had four different intermediates created. And each intermediate is created by the work of an enzyme. So this is an enzyme, that's an enzyme, that's an enzyme. Each one of those things is an enzyme that changes this into that. We're going to talk about enzymes in a couple of videos. But just know a metabolic pathway is a pathway that has got a bunch of steps, each step catalyzed by an enzyme. Now, catabolic pathways are specific pathways that break things down. When molecules are broken down in the body, generally energy is released. So as your body takes food in and breaks it down so that you can get the energy to do what your body needs to do, that would be a catabolic pathway. The opposite of this is an anabolic pathway. Anabolic pathways are pathways that require energy to build molecules. The way I always remember this is anabolic steroids were used to get people big, so anabolic pathways build things up. Our next topic is going to be energy. As far as def uh, definitions go, Energy is just the ability to do work. If you are on the Campbell textbook, I think it will define it as the ability to rearrange matter in a system. That's a complicated way of saying energy is the ability to do work and to help things move from one place to another or change from one form to another or just generally to make something happen. There are four forms of energy. Let's go through them real quick. The first form of energy that you need to know is kinetic energy. This is energy of motion. So when things are moving, they're exhibiting kinetic energy. Right now, as my mouth moves up and down, my mouth has kinetic energy. As somebody runs by outside your window, they have kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is just energy of motion. Something is moving when it is displaying or using kinetic energy. Next form of energy is thermal energy. Now, the picture on the right is a bit of a it's a bit inaccurate because it's showing both light energy and thermal energy. Know that thermal energy is just heat, all right? It is the heat that you would feel if you put your hand above that burner. In general, as far as the body is concerned or as far as living systems are concerned, thermal energy is wasted energy. The only thing it's good for is keeping your body warm, which is important, but beyond that, it can't really be harnessed to do much work. So as far as biological systems are concerned, thermal energy is generally wasted energy. Your third form 
is potential energy. If you look at that picture right there out on the hand of the statue, you see a base jumper getting ready to jump off. He's not moving yet, so he doesn't have kinetic energy. He has potential energy. He is high above the ground, so the energy that he has is represented by the distance between him and the ground. His potential energy will be converted to kinetic energy the moment he steps off and leaps. And the last one that you need to know is chemical energy. This is energy that is stored in the instability of molecules. A molecule that is more unstable has more chemical energy than a molecule that is more stable. I think I might have said that wrong. Let me recap it just in case I said it wrong. If a molecule is more unstable, it has more instability, it has got a lot of chemical energy. If a molecule is more stable, it has less chemical energy. As a molecule transitions from being less stable to more stable, it gives up its chemical energy. An example of that is the match right there. As that match burns, the molecules are moving from less stable to more stable, releasing energy in the form of light and heat. Thermodynamics, big words. And these are the last two things we're going to talk about today. So thermodynamics is just the study of energy transformation in a collection of matter. So in a collection of matter, atoms, particles, animals, whatever, you're studying how energy is changing forms. Now there's two systems, thermodynamics studiers, thermodynamicists, I don't know. People who study thermodynamics keep track of an open system and a closed system. In an open system, energy can flow in and energy can flow out. So a good example of a open system is your body. You take energy in when you eat, energy flows out of you as you move around and give off heat and all that good stuff. You are an open system. A closed system is a system in which no energy goes in and no energy goes out. Everything is contained within that system. So an example of this would be like a thermos with your hot coffee in it. No energy is going into that system and ideally no energy is going out. All of the energy that goes in with that coffee stays in with that coffee once it's closed. Thermodynamics is broken down into two laws. The first law is known as the energy conservation law, and this just says that there is no new energy on the earth. All right, Energy can change forms, but it cannot be created or destroyed. So you might have potential energy that gets converted to kinetic energy, and maybe that kinetic energy gets converted to thermal energy. You've had three energy conversions, but no new energy was created and no energy was destroyed. So no, first law, energy can't be created or destroyed, it just changes forms, which leads us to our second law of thermodynamics, which is that no transfer is perfect. So as our energy is changing from one form to the next, you always lose a little bit of that, a little bit of that energy to heat. This law is also known as the law of entropy, or the chaos law. Entropy just means disorder, and the second law talks about the fact that left alone without any input of energy, all things will tend towards disorder. You know this by looking at your bedroom. If you don't put the energy into cleaning your bedroom, eventually it will become more disorderly. So as energy changes form from one to the other, a little bit of heat is given off. That heat that is given off causes molecules in the area to speed up. As they speed up, they are more chaotic. They have more entropy. Now you see down there at the um, point local versus universal. A lot of people will argue, well, if living systems are building, mo building molecules, isn't that increasing order when the second law of thermodynamics says that every reaction must decrease the order of the universe? This is where we have to look at local versus universal. In the instance where a molecule is being built, yes, locally order is increasing, which seems to go counter to the second law of thermodynamics. But as energy is being used to build whatever molecule, there is also energy being given off in the form of heat. It's wasted energy. Remember, no energy transfer is perfect. So while order is increasing locally, the heat that is being given off is decreasing the stability of the surrounding environment and universally the chaos of the universe is being increased just a little bit. So that was a lot of words. Second law of thermodyna thermodynamics, just remember no energy transfer is perfect. Some waste energy is always given off which increases the order of the universe and in general the universe is tending towards chaos rather than order.
I believe that's with everything that we've got to cover today. I hope you found this little tutorial helpful. I hope you'll join us again on the next Lab 207 webcast. Have a good day. Thank you.